Today we're going to be looking at secular Renaissance vocal music, more specifically the Renaissance magical. Let us consider the context in which this music came about. As we know, religion was a strong force during the Middle Ages, but with the emergence of the Renaissance, there was the force of humanism. The human experience became the center of human thinking. People thought about what it meant to be human, they were less concerned with the divine, and they wanted to express the daily experience of, of people. And the most obvious place to look was within the folklore and the folk songs of their respective countries. They turned to their national poetry, and they made a concerted effort to bring about the meaning of the words. This was their primary focus. They, they resorted to every possible means to actualize the meaning of the text. As we know, during the 15th century, interestingly, an international form of music arose with an agreement on conventions and music. But somehow in the 16th century, music became more nationalized. One of the influences was the beginning of the printing of music around 1501. Now, music was readily available. It was sung in the vernacular. Printing made it accessible. People would sit around the table after meals and sing. So this fostered some sort of national identity. This was one aspect. It was no longer just professionals performing and it was no longer just music being put on to serve a purpose. In a sense, it also became a commercial commodity. Music was sold at a certain price. And what emerged was this emphasis on imagery. And of course, uh, not only imagery, but shifting moods. Moods and imagery are part of the human experience. <sighs> imagery did occur in, in motets, which was the religious counterpart of the madrigal. But the, it, it didn't shift as rapidly. It was more unified. There were certain distinct images. In the madrigal, every line featured a new sentiment, a new image, a new musical depiction of an idea. It was a vivid depiction that brought the text to life. Madrigals emerged in Italy, essentially, around 1520. And for the first time, this actually allowed Italian composers to be at the center of European music. In the 1520s, they began to look at the Italian poetry, starting with the, 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 with the oldest Italian poetry, Petrarca, one of the great uh, figures in Italian poetry from the 1300s, going all the way to later poets like Marino. But they took this poetry and they resorted to every possible means poetic and musical to bring the meaning of the, of the text to life. Essentially, most of the words dealt with common daily secular themes, love and war. They would resort, as we mentioned before, to word painting. But now they took it a step further. They tried to imitate the sounds of war. They tried to depict the, the physical movements of a person. So, for instance, if a protagonist was walking slowly, deep in thought in the text, then, in fact, the madrigalist would actually show this through an ascending chromatic line, which would traverse a considerable uh, range of notes, but do so quite slowly. It was a natural depiction. Another example might be the, the, the idea of escaping or fleeing would, in fact, involve a, a rapid imitation of notes, melodic imitation. So these, these very uh, vivid means of bringing sentiments to life through music actually became known later on as madrigalisms because the madrigal paved the way for later ventures such as opera and the, but going back to the current situation in the 16th century there were prolific madrigalists such as Lucha, Marencio and of course the famous Carlo Gesualdo who was the prince uh, of Venosa he was also, as you know, a murderer. He had his wife and her lover murdered because he discovered them in the act, as it were. So he was a very interesting character. But they were in themselves passionate people, the Madrigalists. They cared, they cared about the human experience. Now, as to the manner in which the text was set, 
Generally, it consisted of a single stanza, and there were usually seven or say eleven syllables in a line, an odd number of syllables. The, the rhyming scheme varied, sometimes it was standard, sometimes it was free rhyme. It was through composed, so essentially the music changed throughout the poetic setting and there was no refrain. So it had a certain form, it was a recognizable genre, the magical. And in fact it became such a popular genre, it spread to other shores, it was taken up in England along with the, the lute song. And of course this was the time of Shakespeare in England, so it was a, a right ripe soil as it were for the such a genre to take off of course in English in this case but I mean the magicalists in England really it, they went to town with it they, they depicted English poetry this was this was the reign of Queen Elizabeth the first and we're going to look at an example in which she is actually brought to life by the famous magicalist Thomas Wilkes in a piece known as as Vesta was descending but uh, Clearly, literature and music were equal partners at this time, the time of Shakespeare, and both flourished during this era. And we're going to see how the magicalists resorted to literary means to actualize their music. As we mentioned, ultimately the magical, it set the, the bar, as it were, for what we expect in terms of musical imagery. To this day, some of those cliches are still pertinent. And the, the magical expanded in importance, it was taken up in, in concerts and in theatres, going all the way to opera and other, uh, other forms, perhaps even the oratorio. They owe themselves to the magical. So we're going to look at a specific magical and see how musical imagery is brought to life in this piece. Thomas Wilkes was one of the most accomplished English madrigalists. He was also an organist at Winchester College and church composer. He remained at the college for three or four years and it was during this time that he composed his finest madrigals. One of his famous madrigals was As Vesta Was Descending, which comes from the Triumphs of Oriana, published in 1601. It is an anthology of English madrigals, which was written in honor of Queen Elizabeth I, who was sometimes referred to as Oriana. It is a six-voice magical which depicts Vesta, the Roman goddess of the hearth. She is coming down the hill with her attendants, who are known as Diana's darlings. Diana was the Roman goddess of chastity, hunting and the moon. They see the maiden queen, Oriana, who is associated with Elizabeth, with her shepherd gallants climbing the hill. Diana's attendants run down the hill to be with Ariana. The music has a light atmosphere and uses word painting. Here you can hear the opening of the work sung by all six voices. Notice how in bars four to five, the alto uses descending notes to depict the physical act of descending. The tenor does the same in bar 5 and the soprano too in bar 6. Here you can hear the complementary word painting device on the word ascending in bars 12 and 13 in the alto. This same device is taken up in the next two bars in the soprano 1 and 2 and then throughout the work in like manner. Here you can hear in bars 36 to 45 how all the voices take up the word running in imitative counterpoint and depict this physical action with rapid descending notes. Here you can hear starting in bar 48 
The pairs of voices depicting Diana's darlings running down first two by two. Next, sets of three voices depict the words then three by three. Finally, all six voices sing the word together in bar 52 to show how all of Vesta's attendants have run down to be with Aviana. And then only a single voice in bar 57 sings the words all alone to show how Vesta has been left all alone. Here you can hear the concluding section starting in bar 81, where Vesta's attendants sing Long Live Fair of Iana. These words are sung first in the tenor two and then taken up in stretcher imitation, starting in the same bar in the soprano one and continued in all the voices until the end of the piece. All the while, starting in bar 85, the basses sing a series of long notes tied together. The longest note is on the word long, which is tied over four bars, starting in bar 85. 